On this linear demand curve, uh, the slope is constant uh, throughout. The slope at, at point A is the same as at point uh, B. But we can show very easily that the elasticity coefficient is not the same. We can do this by assume a price of P1. And we lower the price Uh, we lower the price to P2. The quantity expands from Q1 uh, to Q2 when the price goes from P1 uh, to P2. Remember the coefficient is this. Now here we have a reduction in the price and I'm just eyeballing it. It looks to me about 10%. And we have an expansion in the quantity that looks to me about 100%, which means the coefficient uh, is a 10, which means it's, it's greater than 1. And therefore, the demand in this range of the demand curve is elastic. But suppose we take another price, P3. At P3, quantity demand it will be Q3. If we cut the price to P4, the quantity demand it goes to uh, uh, Q4. You cut the price in half. Uh, price reduction is about 50%. You increase the quantity, and again, eyeballing it, I'm just, it looks to me to be 10%. Well, in this case, uh, the coefficient of elasticity is less than one. It's one-fifth, in fact. Uh, as a result, we would say that down in this range of the demand curve, the demand curve is uh, inelastic. So we go from a situation in which the uh, elasticity coefficient is less than 1 to one in which the elasticity coefficient is greater than 1. And you can imagine that as we go up this curve, we're going to cross over a point where the elasticity coefficient is equal to 1. I won't explain why, but that happens at the midpoint uh, in the demand curve. That is, at this point, uh, the elasticity coefficient is going to be equal to 1, which of course follows that in this range, bottom half of the demand curve, the demand curve is uh, inelastic. In this top half of the demand curve, uh, the uh, demand curve is uh, is the elastic. And of course, uh, this means that if a firm is at a point like C, uh, that firm has no problem in, in reasoning that it should move up uh, the demand curve to a higher price. Now, the reason is that when it moves from C to, say, uh, D, its revenues have, are going to go up. As it cuts back on production, its costs go down it is uh, increasing profits by moving from C to D, or from B to C to D. Uh, if, in fact, it goes up, goes to combination E, uh, then it moves into the elastic range, which means that the price increase will lead to a revenue reduction. But at the same time, because it is producing less, it's incurring fewer costs, um, uh, the profits may or may not go up. Uh, what we will show later on that uh, indeed a firm can in fact maximize uh, its profits by moving to a point like E or, or F. Exactly where we'll leave that uh, to later. Moral of the story is if there is a firm that's a monopoly and it's down here with an elasticity of coefficient less than one, then by all means it should raise its, its price because by doing so, uh, it maximizes profits. And indeed, a monopoly should never produce where the elasticity coefficient is less uh, than one. Its elasticity coefficient should always be greater uh, than one. Now, from time to time, we might draw a, a demand curve that looks like this and say, well, this demand curve is elastic. We're not judging the demand curve based on, on the slope of the curve, although it has a low uh, slope. What we're really thinking is that if you were to extend this demand curve beyond the scope of this screen and extend it all the way to the horizontal axis, 
what we're talking about in context of this graph is a portion of the full demand curve that is in the, in the upper half of the demand curve and therefore is elastic. Again, the upper half is elastic, the lower half is inelastic. If we were to look at a graph that looks like this, we might describe this demand as inelastic. And we do so because, again, if you can imagine extending the demand curve on up until it hits the vertical axis, you would recognize that we're in the lower half of the demand curve, and as a consequence, we're in the inelastic range of that uh, demand, demand curve. Now, why would a firm want to raise um, its demand? Well, the obvious explanation that everybody points to is that by raising demand, a firm can sell uh, more. Um, at a price of um, a P1, the quantity demand, it goes uh, from Q1 with the greater demand. It goes all the way up to uh, Q2. Uh, we move from combination A to combination uh, B. Well, of course, the firm would like to uh, sell more. But what's important, too, is that note that uh, at point B, uh, the firm is further down into the lower half of, of its demand curve, into the inelastic range than it is at A, which means that uh, the firm has a greater opportunity to indeed uh, raise its price and raise its uh, revenues. Uh, it's important for business people to understand that demand curves slope downward, uh, but it's just as important, if not more important, uh, for them to recognize uh, the, uh, the elasticity of demand and that they should, in fact, uh, constantly be making assessments as to what their elasticity of demand is. Uh, we pointed out that if a firm ever uh, calculates that its elasticity coefficient is less than one, then it's a no-brainer. It should raise its price. Why? Because its total revenues will go up and its costs uh, will go down because with the higher price, they'll be selling uh, less and producing less. Uh, thank you very much.